Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, as we wait for people to join in in our live video, I'm going to read some jokes, as usual. Uh, again, when you join in, feel free to comment, say hello. So the first joke I have, what did the buffalo say to his little boy when he dropped him off at school? Bison. How do trees go online? They log in. How many tickles? Oh, I see Elen, I see Twyla. Hello. Uh, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. Hi, Twyla. Oh, they see the good ones. Hi, good ones. What do you call a chicken looking at a bowl of lettuce? Chicken Caesar salad. I asked a Frenchman if he played video games. He said, we. Oui. I don't know if you don't play. If you don't play video games, you probably didn't get that one. I'm not gonna explain it though. Oh, hi, Fisks. Uh, how many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but it takes nine visits. <laughs> What do you call an alligator detective? An investigator. Hey, Carl. I see Carl there. Okay, that's probably sort of appropriate, I guess. Maybe inappropriate. Could be either one. Moses guided his people through the desert for 40 years. Even then, men were unwilling to ask for directions. Okay, we'll do... Oh, we got maybe enough people already. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do this one, last one, okay. Research shows that six out of seven dwarves aren't happy. <laughs> All right, so that's our jokes for the day, and welcome to our Bible study. I encourage all comments, say hello, comment with each other in the comments as we do the video. Feel free to, to type away. Uh, going to demonstrate an emotion, and I thought, what better way to demonstrate an emotion than to humili humiliate myself through viewing pleasure? So what I'm going to do is demonstrate with this children's game that we actually have never played, but I think we've had it for how many years? I don't know. It's called Wet Head. Oh, and can you pass me the towel too? So what the game is... This little container on the top, it spins, and it's got a little bit of water inside of it. And at every plug that you pull out, um, one of them is going to release water on my head. So I'm actually going to get a towel going as well. I hope I can do this effectively. Ugh. Okay, I'm ready. Again, humiliation for your viewing pleasure. What emotion am I demonstrating? as these are being pulled out. So go ahead, helper, off camera. Oh, okay, there's one. Again, one of these is gonna release the water. <laughs> Another one. I don't know how many are in there. Okay. I don't know if you can even hear it. I can hear it sloshing around in there. Uh oh, towel, towel, wait, wait, okay. Oh, no, <laughs> not that one. So what emotion am I demonstrating with this? What emotion am I feeling right now? Oh, this might be the one. Oh, oh it is the one. <laughs> so now I'm all wet. So what emotion was I demonstrating while the plugs were being pulled out? And I was humiliating myself for you. And almost getting my computer wet, but not quite. So what emotion was being demonstrated? Anybody in this room can shout it out too. Fear. Fear. Okay, fear is one. That's very similar to what I'm getting at. That's uh, definitely part of it. Anyone else? What's related to fear? And if you've noticed, oh, dread. Spiders. 
Joyce says dread. I know she says dress, but I'm pretty sure that's dread. Spiders? I don't think it's spiders. It's a good thing I don't have much hair to actually get wet, so it doesn't you take long to dry. Related. You uh -huh. said it was related to fear. Yeah, related to fear. Rick said his silliness and emotion. Let me make sure I'm all dry here. Okay. It's not silliness. You know, you could probably cheat and look at the title of the lesson of the video that we're watching right now. <laughs> That'd be one way to look at it. And if there's other people on the side and they know fear, and we've been going through some subjects the past few lessons, and we've been doing it alphabetically. Melinda's waiting in apprehension. Apprehension starts with the letter A. What's related to fear and starts with the letter A? Oh, close. Very, very close. He said anguish. Oh, Tina says it. She's the winner. Anxiety. So that's what we're discussing tonight is anxiety. I'm probably going to continue to be wiping wet spots as time goes on. I put in just a little bit of water, but I guess I put in too much. And my computer's okay. It's all right. Those who are watching. Okay, so anxiety. Uh, anxiety defined. Uh, you know, we all experience anxiety. We've probably used the word in, in our lives. Anxiety is distress about future uncertainties. I didn't know when that plug was going to get pulled and I was going to get all wet. So I had that anxiety, I had distress, because I didn't know what the future was going to hold. It was uncertain. Um, and it's characterized by that mental agitation or uneasiness. I felt a little uneasy. Um, you know, it was all in fun. I wasn't going to get hurt, so I wasn't that worried about it. But... When we have some anxiety in our lives, it can be either mild or severe. I had kind of mild anxiety with this little game, but we can have situations in our lives that are more severe anxiety. And it primarily has to deal with apprehension of what might happen in the future. Uh, you're not sure what's going to happen. Uh, and it could be either near or distant. You might be worried about something that might happen tomorrow or something that's going to happen in 20 years or 15 years. But it really deals with that, and it's something that is very unproductive. It's something that... You can probably relate that too. It doesn't really do you any good, um, but we all do it. Um, there's one phrase that I heard that I think is kind of funny. It says, worry is like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but it won't get you anywhere. You just go back and forth and back and forth. Oh, Tina's got a very dark sense of humor and says, good thing it wasn't Russian roulette. I agree. Wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> that would be much more anxiety. So my question, uh, again, please put this in the comments is what are some things that cause you anxiety? What are some things in your life that cause you anxiety, that cause you that stress? Uh, Evan on the side here said fear. What are some of those things that cause you that fear and that anxiety? Uh, yeah, uh, Rick has a good comment where he says, one person's anxiety is another person's excited anticipation. Um, that is true. I remember looking into that one time. Um, if you're going to do a, a race of some kind, they, they interviewed some elite athletes and they said, what do you do when you're so nervous before a race? And they don't. They say, well, we're not we're nervous. We're just excited. We're excited to do this. So that, that kind of emotion where your heart's going, your blood pressure goes up, um, feel maybe a little shaky, butterflies in your stomach. Um, you can view that as stress and anxiety and make it a negative thing. Or you can view it as nervousness and excited about what's going to happen. You know, those, same, those emotions reflect the same way physically in your body. So you can essentially choose which one you want to feel at any given time. Uh, some of the things I thought of of what might cause anxiety, um, it could be your physical surroundings. Uh, it could be the heat. Uh, we've been kind of been going through a bit of a heat wave. Again, I know Carl's watching. He's laughing at us, thinking this is like springtime weather for him. To us, it's very hot. So that can cause people stress. They just can't escape the heat. Their house is hot. Outside is hot. Um, it could be noise. Uh, if you have construction going on near your house, and it's constantly going, 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 and cause you a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. Uh, it could be clutter, just something you can't move around in your house. Uh, we just came back from kind of a big trip, and we haven't quite unpacked and got everything put away, so we're kind of stepping over a bunch of stuff in our living room. Uh, that doesn't cause me anxiety, but it could, you know, if it, if it hung around for a really long time. Uh, it could be unfinished business. Uh, if, if you have something you want to say to somebody, uh, you have something that you know that you need to say to somebody, and you haven't done it yet, that can cause you anxiety. You can be nervous about what's going to happen. How's the conversation going to go? 
what's going to happen. Maybe an interview that you're going for a job or for something like that. It can cause you a little bit of stress. Again, you can view that as being nervous and excited or causing you stress and anxiety. Uh, Tina says, oh, yeah, Tina says, being on a road, I don't know when I have an appointment time. Okay, so you're in unfamiliar surroundings and you're trying to get to a certain place. You have some anxiety to reach it. Uh, Melinda says, things I can't control. Uh, if you have things that are beyond your control, that can cause you stress. Oh, Brenda Ball joined us. Hello, Brenda. Uh, Joyce says, an upcoming event can cause anxiety. So something like an exam. If you're going to get tested, uh, again, that might be that interview. Uh, any sort of major event that's coming up can cause you anxiety and cause you stress. Maybe you did something you regret and you have guilt. That's another form of anxiety. Uh, you can maybe you lashed out in anger. We talked about anger in one of the past lessons. Maybe you had one of those emotional outbursts and you lashed out and you feel bad. You have anxiety. How are you going to deal with that? Um, and again, unknown about the future. Maybe you don't know what's going to, um, well, we don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. So that can cause a lot of people a lot of stress. And we're seeing that today in our society now. People don't know what's going to happen. There's uneasiness. There's anxiety. You go to Matthew chapter 6. Uh, this is a pretty common passage if you've studied the Bible. Uh, Tina mentions confrontation. So very true, that can cause a lot of anxiety, especially the confrontation you know is going to happen. Uh, I know in my experience, it's almost harder leading up to the confrontation than the confrontation itself is sometimes. You, know, you can have that anxiety of, of a confrontation with any person. So Ma Matthew 6, we're going to read a fairly long passage. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. And it's a passage that really acknowledges anxiety. Uh, in this passage, they use the word worry, which is a very similar thing, if not the same thing. You know, you have that, that stress, that negative stress in your life. So Matthew 6, starting in verse 25, says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Uh, Brenda had a comment about what uh, about anxiety, saying limited intake of coffee on a bad anxiety day. Also, no Coke, Pop, or Pepsi, and that's very true. Anxiety is very tied in with your kind of blood chemistry and your your body chemistry, I guess. So if you're giving yourself a stimulant, something that has caffeine in it, that can tend to make it worse. We will experience anxiety, and this passage in Matthew six does. Uh, show us that that is something that we will experience. God is acknowledging this. Jesus is the one saying these words, and he's saying that you are going to experience anxiety. And this passage lists some of the things that we might stress about. Uh, you might not stress about the particular things in here. He talks about clothes, food, but maybe your life. Maybe you worry about what's going to happen down the road. Maybe you're worried about, again, the pandemic. Am I going to catch the virus? Uh, you know, or my loved one's going to catch the virus. You can be very concerned about those things. And those are physical things. Those are things that are happening around us. And it's very understandable that we feel that stress and anxiety about these things because they do surround us and that's what we experience and that's what we are hands-on with day to day. So we can have that anxiety. But if anxiety can't add another hour to our lives, how can it affect the future? Uh, it's not going to help anything. It's something that we do. It's like that rocking chair. You just go back and forth, back and forth. You're not making any progress. You're just moving, you know, doing something. But God is mindful of our true needs. And again, I'm stressing here our true needs. He is able to provide. And these are things that we can still be concerned about. I think there's a bit of a difference between concerned and being having anxiety. Uh, you can 
have a mindfulness about making sure that you earn enough money so that you clothe yourself and clothe your family and provide for yourself and your physical needs. What he's being talked about in this passage, though, is we can still be concerned about these things, but we ought not make those things our priority. We can't make those things our first priority, where that's all we're thinking about is our immediate physical surroundings and putting God on the back burner and doing the right thing on the back burner. Uh, we have to make sure that following God, following his word, is our first priority, and these other things are going to fall into place besides that. We have to make sure that that is our first priority. So our second question, we had a lot of good input on what causes anxiety, what causes anxiety in our lives. How can we reduce our anxiety? Again, Brenda touched on this, and it's a very good point um, where our, our body chemistry can really affect our mood and affect the way we feel about certain things. Uh, I don't remember, I'm never a big fan of the made up words, but there's that one called hangry. You know, if you're really hungry, you tend to get angry. You know, you tend to get on a short fuse if you're hungry, if you need some food in your system. So our, what we intake into our system, if you take a lot of caffeine, you might feel a little bit more stress. Caffeine raises your, your blood pressure, raises your heart rate up a little bit. And you can feel that anxiety as you're trying to do something and, and these things that stress you out a little bit might stress you out a little bit more if you mix around with your body chemistry that way. But what are some ways that we can reduce our anxiety in a biblical sense? Now again, don't limit your comments to that, but think about that. Uh, how can we limit our anxiety uh, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives in any way, fashion, or form? But how can we do it also with, uh, with God in mind, according to the scriptures? Uh, if you look in Matthew 6, again, I'm going to reread verses 33 to 34. So Matthew 6, verse 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. One thing we can do to reduce our anxiety, according to this passage, I really like this passage. It lists a bunch of things that we are... Um, stressed out about, you know, they have that negative stress. I always feel I should be saying negative stress because I find stress sometimes is a good thing. You have to stress yourself to improve, to get better. Um, but if you have negative stress, that's going to bring you down and wear you down. And if you put those physical things as your priority in your life, you are going to start to get brought down. You're going to start to get worn down because your priorities are in the wrong spot and you're having that anxiety about these things. Then he switches it and he says, but seek. He says, but, so instead of doing these things, do this instead. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The kingdom or rule of God in our life is the most important thing. Uh, Joyce has a comment where she says, I can pray and then make a decision not to worry about it. So you can do that. You can uh, pray about it. So you're acting on the thing that's causing you anxiety. And I think that's very important. And again, that comes with this very general statement in saying, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That's a very all-encompassing verse. When he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, he's really telling you, follow the Bible. Do what the Bible says. Seek the way God wants you to live. And that, that touches every part of your life. So when you start doing that, you're going to be so focused on doing those things, you're not going to have that time to, have, to be stressed about these other things. Uh, Melinda says she tries to look at the big picture. And will this anxiety causing event be here in, say, one year, five years, ten years, etc.? Um... I think about that sometimes, like if I, you know, say I, I, I don't know, tear my coat. There's one time I was walking by a chain link fence and it kind of snagged my nice new raincoat, you know, like, you know, a breathable raincoat that was really nice, tore it a little bit and it kind of bothers you. It's like, oh, that really stresses me out. But really five years, 10 years, that was, I think that was actually when I was in university. So that's closer to 15, 20 years away uh, in the past. I didn't even think about that. Well, I just did, but. It doesn't stress me out. It doesn't bother me. You know, it doesn't give me a hard time. And that's very true. You put it into perspective. Yeah, this thing that's bothering you right now at this immediate time, is that going to really be something you're thinking about and stressed about in one year or five years or ten years down the road? In this passage, I really like how he does say that we do have to follow God. That is what we do in place of worrying about these things. Uh, Tina, Marty says... Marty Clark says, keep your priorities straight. And that's what's super important here. And that's what's being stressed in this passage. Instead of being concerned about all those physical things, focus on what God wants. And we need to act by following his teachings. Again, reading the Bible is necessary, but you can't stop there. You have to put it to practice in your life. 
when you do those things, it's almost that act of um, being uh, focused on doing that so much that you don't have time to worry in a sense. You don't have to be concerned about some of those things because you're working towards doing something better, improving yourself. When we put him first, he will provide for our true needs. And again, true needs. Uh, I might think my true need is a new bike, new bicycle. I love bikes, so I want a new bike. That's not really a true need. You know, God really knows what we want, and he's going to bless us with what we need. He's going to provide for us. Uh, this is where faith comes in. Uh, faith is one of those things that is integral in reducing anxiety in your life. Uh, instead of worrying about what might happen, we have to be busy doing what is right, studying your Bible and acting on it, and having faith that when we do what's right, things are going to work out for the best. We trust what he, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6. We trust that. He says, don't worry about these things. Focus on following him, following the Bible, putting those things to practice in your life. And that anxiety is not going to be a, a, a problem anymore. You're going to be able to choose not to worry about those things. We need to trust that. We have to believe that it's going to work. When we have that faith, we're going to be able to move ahead. We're going to be able to move past that anxiety. Uh, one thing that, uh, one phrase or one quote that I read that I thought was really good was anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. Anxiety truly does drain you. If you're really worried about something, you just get drained and you have no more motivation. You feel just worn down and it really drains you of your strength today. Uh, you can't focus on the things you really need to focus on because your priorities are in the wrong spot, as Marty said. Uh, if we have enough faith to overcome the anxiety and have enough faith in Jesus and his teachings, we can reduce and hopefully even eliminate anxiety in our lives to a certain extent. Again, we have to be realistic because we are going to experience anxiety. We have to do our best in dealing with that anxiety. Uh, in Matthew 6, he says, follow his commands. Uh, make him the Lord of our lives. Make him the rule in our lives. Another principle that I really like is be realistic with anxiety. Um, Sometimes we get a misconception about what peace of mind is and it means. A few things peace of mind does not depend on is solving all of the problems of the world. Uh, peace of mind does not depend on righting all the wrongs of the world. Uh, peace of mind does not mean or depend on removing all of the imperfections in maybe yourself or the people that you love or the people around you. Peace of mind doesn't depend on getting all that you want. Peace of mind doesn't depend on those things. It's more of an internal thing. It's more of a, a, a thing of being content with what you're presented with. We're going to go to the Old Testament. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. This is a book in the Bible written by Solomon, who is blessed by God uh, with wisdom. Uh, he has, he's known as the, the wisest man in the world, the wisest teacher in the world. So Ecclesiastes chapter 8, we're going to read verses 16 and 17. Uh, Ecclesiastes is a really good book. I really like reading that one because it really does have so many good thoughts in it and so many good perspectives on practical living, really, about what you should be thinking about and how the world really works. Ecclesiastes 8, starting in verse 16. It says, When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to observe man's labor on the earth, his eyes not seeing sleep day or night, then I saw all that God has done. No one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all his efforts to search it out, man cannot discover its meaning. Even if a wise man claims he knows, he cannot really comprehend it. This is one of those things, it's a passage that um, some people might not enjoy because they, they, it's, it's a very realistic passage. It says, we're not going to figure everything, everything out. We, we don't have the capacity to figure out 100% of everything. Uh, the world is infinitely complex. If you get into you know, the sciences in the world. It's one of those things, I've, I've mentioned this many times before, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. You start to see everything just starts to open up. You see something very simple and it just opens up into this whole world of complexity. And that's what's being discussed in this passage, showing that no one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Nobody can totally understand this. We're not going to be able to solve all of the world's problems. Uh, some crazy research papers that I've ran across, and these are actual papers written in a university by graduate students. Which can jump higher, the dog flea or the cat flea? Research. They spent money and time and research a year of their lives figuring this out and writing a paper on it. Do woodpeckers get headaches? Another one. 
These are things that people research because we don't know and we can't comprehend. And how do you really figure that out? You know, you can't ask a woodpecker, do you have a headache? You know, does that hurt? You have to try to test it somehow and figure it out. How do you analyze that? The world is just infinitely complex. One thing we need to do need to really focus on is we need to rely on God for the scriptures and true wisdom. That's what we have to focus on. Some things will not change. We have to be realistic to accept that. We have to understand that that is a fact of life. Uh, there are problems out there that have no solutions that we're not going to get. Uh, these, there are situations that must simply be lived through. Uh, it's very unfortunate and very sad, but also very true. And if you can understand that and accept that, hopefully your anxiety can be lessened. Uh, there are situations like sickness, terminal disease, terrible situations to deal with that sometimes you can't do anything about it. And that's what Melinda mentioned as being something that causes anxiety. That is, again, back where we put uh, faith into play. Not worrying about something because we can't do anything about it, except put it in God's hands and pray. Uh, we do have another avenue of prayer that we can rely on as Christians to reduce the anxiety in our lives. We have this realistic knowledge of our own limitations. We're not going to understand everything. And hopefully that will help us relax and slow down. Hopefully we can understand that, okay, we don't have to spend all of our waking hours uh, stressing about this thing that we can't control and that we won't be able to understand. Accept it and understand that it is something that cannot be moved upon. We have to just be able to accept that. Uh, there's another phrase that I like where it says, besides the noble art of getting things done is the noble art of leaving things undone. Uh, I wonder if picking your battles is another way to re rephrase that. Uh, some things that you, it's wiser just to let it go and not worry about it. We can't comprehend it. We can't understand it. Just live through it. Again, like everything, everything that I say here is not like never worry about anything. You know, we still have to be concerned about things. Uh, never give up on understanding everything. We still have to understand some things. But there are those things in our lives that we are not going to be able to understand. We're not going to be able to tackle them. We have to learn to accept that. Uh, one thing that we experienced uh, when Kristen and I were hiking uh, we were out in the mountains this past weekend, and it was pretty hot. Again, the heat wave in this area is kind of all over the province. And we were hiking up kind of this uh, waterfall area, up this gorge. And this is one of those times where we could feel anxiety and stress. We're so hot, we're hiking up there. Uh, we actually didn't bring any water because we thought the hike was a little bit shorter than what it actually was. When the wind blew, if you hold your arms out, you let the wind blow through you, it feels so good. Those are the things you appreciate. You learn to understand that we can't change the heat. We can't change the fact that we forgot to bring water, or just didn't choose to bring water. All we can appreciate is those things that come along that we can like and understand and really enjoy. Those little small victories and those small blessings that come our way, like the wind. You just take that moment and relax and appreciate it. And it helps your anxiety go away. It helps you feel a lot better. We have to learn to let go of some problems and allow the Lord to be in charge of them. Uh, understand that maybe you can't do anything about it, but understand that God can. God has the power to deal with this. And back to again Melinda's comment, sometimes the only recourse you have is prayer. If you go to Philippians chapter 4, again a very popular passage. I, I tend to read this one quite often because it is so good and so practical and so helpful in those times where you do feel stress in your life. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Again, don't limit yourself on your own time to reading those two verses. Read the whole chapter. This whole section is just awesome. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We as Christians have something that no one in the world else in the world has. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have the ability to converse with God through the avenue of prayer. We can put those things that we can't control in God's hands. And when we have that good prayer life, we our anxiety will diminish. We won't be stressed about things. Again, we'll probably be concerned about things. We're going to be acting on things to the point, uh, to, the, to the most that we can control things, to the most of our ability. When it gets to that point, though, when we've done all that we can, we put it in God's hands and we can let it go. We can let our anxiety go with it and put it on God's shoulders. Uh, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Make sure that you understand that 
Uh, he wants us, as we do this, to count our, thanks, count our blessings as well, uh, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. And as we do that, we're going to recognize those small blessings that we do have. And again, that's going to help reduce our anxiety. Uh, we're going to recognize that things are bad in this circumstance that we can't control. But when we count our blessings and we look at the things we're thankful for, we're going to recognize, well, yeah, but I still have these other things that I can be very, very thankful for. And you can learn to have less anxiety, have that peace that transcends all understanding because of that. Prayer is one of those things that if you have a good prayer life, you can truly reduce your anxiety a lot. Again, that has to come with faith. You have to understand that you are talking to God and you believe that he is doing things for your best. Uh, he is going to give you what you truly need. And if you believe that, and you have that faith, and you have that avenue of prayer, we can reduce the anxiety in our lives. Uh, let's close our Bible study in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this evening that we could look at the concept and the, the emotion of anxiety, this negative stress that we have in our lives at times. I pray that we can uh, keep our priorities straight, that we can make sure that we understand that you are the one in control. Uh, you've given us the scriptures, and I pray that we have the... the the strength and the dedication and discipline to study it and to put it to practice in our lives so that we can put our priorities in the right place and that we aren't as concerned with the physical things that surround us and we don't have that worry and stress about those things and we make sure that we put those things that are out of our control onto your shoulders uh, we know that you are there for us for that and i pray that we can as we do that that we thank you for the many things you blessed us with you have blessed us with so much in this country uh, the situation in the world is uh, dire in a lot of places right now. Uh, I pray that you can be with those people that are struggling in that way uh, with the pandemic and with other things. And I pray that as Christians, we can do the right thing, that we can do all we can to help uh, the situation, uh, those things that we do have control over. I pray that you can give us the strength and the ability to uh, act in the right way uh, according to your scriptures and according uh, to the love that you instruct us to show to all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us. Uh, be safe, be well, and God bless.